The next thing that David thanks God about is health. Who forgives your sins and heals all your diseases? COVID has ravaged the world, but you are seated here because you have survived. You are a survivor. We need to thank God and not take that for granted. Praise be to God. The people who have just dropped from the U.S. warned about Uganda. Uganda is taking things for granted. When Pastor Charles came, he was like, but you people, as you are not serious about things. Bishop has arrived and he's consistent with the soaps because out there, People were dying all over. But the fact that God has kept you, the fact that God has kept our pastors, they are alive, we need to thank God for the gift of health. Are you clapping to the Lord? You're clapping, clapping to <laughs> Praise be to God. The, the other thing that David thanks God for is protection. You need to thank God for protection. He says, he redeems your life from the pit. Some of you are going to fall in all sorts of pits. Some of you are going to have accidents. Some of you, uh, God has saved you from things. You are going to maybe lose your job, but God has saved you from the pit of destruction. Those things should not be taken for granted. Those are intangible blessings. The intangible blessings. The intangible blessings actually s seem to be more, but sometimes all our eyes are on the physical blessings. Somebody say, I'm going to thank God for the intangible blessings. There are a number of intangible blessings uh, that we can talk about. Things that money cannot buy. There is a, a, a poem that says, money can buy you medicine but not health. Money can buy you food but not appetite. Money can buy you a clock but not time. Money can buy you, can even buy you blood but not life. Money can buy you oxygen, but not life. <laughs> Somebody has the money, he, takes, he, takes, he, he has an oxygen pump, he has a blood transfusion, but fails to live. If you are living, that is an intangible blessing that you need to thank God about. Praise be to God. The, I, I want you to make the most out of this thanksgiving. I, I, I'm challenging you to go home or even before you go, just get in that notebook of yours. Just write down the intangible blessings. Write down salvation. Write down health. Write down protection. Write down the joy that he has given you. Write down the appetite that he has given you. There are people who cannot eat and yet they are sick. They are sick. They cannot eat. Everything is dis distasteful to them. But the fact that you wake up and just eat, eat and eat and your appetite has now become a problem, you need to thank God about that. Somebody say amen. Money can buy you a gun, but not security. <laughs> I remember one time we, we were leaving home, we just left, um, and shortly after a thief came into our compound. He broke through the window, he had some tools, broke the shutter, entered through the burglary, went into the sitting room, drilled a hole in the ceiling, went to the bedroom side, drilled a hole in the bedroom, went down. Checked everything, every document, checked every, every envelope, checked every, every cloth, looking for money. Then he went up, he did not get anything, he went the other side to the children's bedroom. He drilled a hole, went down, checked everything. But meanwhile, I had forgotten a book at home after dropping my children and dropping my wife at work. I said, should I go direct to church? So I had I bought a book the previous day and I felt I needed to read that book. So I kept debating, should I go back home before? Like, until I said, no, I have to read this book. I didn't know it was the Holy Spirit prompting me to go back at home. When I went back home, packed out, entered, I went in and I think he, he, the, the thief was in the house for about four hours. And he, he started panicking. Because when I went to the door, he came through the store. I think he did not know I was around. He just went out and we looked at each other like this. The only thing I could afford to tell him is, you, what are you doing here? And he took off. He left his tools there. He did not take any money. We found a bag that he had, he had packed some clothes, but he also left it there. And I said, Lord, 
without any security. Anyone, no one was at home, but without any security, God brought his angels. God led me by his Holy Spirit, took me back because it is God who protects. Those are things to thank God about. <laughs> Hallelujah. So God has kept you. God has saved you from things. Those are intangible blessings that you need to thank God for. Somebody say amen. Yes. Thank God for the intangible blessings. So begin by thanking him for intangible blessings. Then end and graduate to the tangible blessings. Because David does not stop at the tangible blessings. He says he also blesses uh, the Lord with the tangible. He says, who satisfies your mouth? with good things. Who satisfies your mouth with good things? That sounds like food, but it's not limited to food. It is all the good things, like your shoe, your shirt, your dress, your slick phone, your job, your pastor. Your pastor, is a, it, pastor was around, he was online. But now he's here, he's a tangible blessing. We can see him, we can touch him. Thank God for that. Praise be to God. Bishop was in the U.S. for nine months, like he had a pregnancy for nine months. But God brought him back. That is something to thank God about. Praise be to God. What about the friends that God has given you? What about your husband? What about your wife? Some of, some of us take things for granted. God has given you good people in your life, and you take that for granted. So list down those blessings and say, Lord, I thank you for A, B, C. I, I thank you for this person. I thank you for the other person. Lord, I thank you for my wife. Praise be to God. My wife is a blessing. My wife is holy and pure. A is A, B is B. She has no corners. She's, she's straightforward. A, she will tell you this is this. She, there's nothing to hide. What you see is what you get. I thank God for such a wife. <laughs> Praise be to God. So I know that um, when you're counting God, uh, your blessings and telling God about the things he has given you, there's a temptation for you to say, but so-and-so has something better. But the Bible is not telling us that first compare what you have to somebody else. No. The little things that he has given you, Thank God for them because he's the one who has given them to you. The problem with our generation is that we compare one ourselves to other people. We are a generation that is more blessed than people who came before us. Do you know that? We have more cars, we have more houses, we have more clothing. But the problem with our generation is that it is ungrateful. And that is characteristic of the last days. People will be ungrateful. So it does not mean that if... If you have things, you'll be okay. You'll bless the Lord. It does not mean that if you have more, that is when you thank God more. No. The little that he has given you, the few things that he has given you, acknowledge God and bless the Lord for all the good things he has given you. Somebody say amen. Amen. A rich man met a fisherman drawing his nets. So the man asked him, have you finished fishing? said, yes, I've finished. So the rich man told him, why don't you do some more fishing? So the fisherman kept asking him, and then? Then you get some more money. You sell the fish, get some, some more money. The fisherman asks, and then what? Then uh, you buy more boats and uh, expand your business. The fisherman asks, then what? Then uh, you increase your income. Then what? Then you'll be happy. The fisherman asked him, who told you I'm not happy? <laughs> Who told you I'm not happy? You don't have to have more to be happy. Be blessed with the little God has given you. Acknowledge him and thank him. And then when more comes, the blessing will increase and you thank God even more. <laughs> Let us not be a generation that is ungrateful. Let us be a generation that appreciates God for everything he has done for us. So 2020, my Bypass you. Many people are thinking gunomaka gunsaze. That's what they are saying. Gunomaka tugubare tugudiriting. Let's delete it. But I tell you, if you look well, there are many things to thank God about. Praise be to God. There are many things to thank God about. 
I want to end with how should we thank God? How should we thank God? Um, we've seen that God has blessed us with tangible blessings and intangible blessings. That is also the same way we should thank God. We should thank God in intangible ways. For example, with our words. Next Sunday we are coming to praise the Lord. The verse that we read, say, David said, Praise the Lord with my innermost being. All that is within me. In other words, David did not take anything for granted. Sometimes you are in church and uh, worship just becomes a normal thing. Because you are used to it. You do not come with a ready heart. You do not praise the Lord because you are used. You are familiar with the things of God. But I want you to come with a ready heart, with your heart. With your innermost being. This week, write down those things that God has done for you. The intangible and the intangible. Don't even just wait for Sunday, okay? I hope you guys who are sitting exams, you're coming on Sunday. <laughs> Praise be to God. You're coming on Sunday. Write down those things that God has done, the intangible blessings. List them down. Because sometimes we come for Thanksgiving and as people are saying, you're like, but what has God done? What has God done? What has God done? Like somebody whom they asked, pr they said, praise the Lord. And he said, for what? He was a believer who had turned away and gone into the world. Somebody came and told, praise the Lord, for what? Do not be a person who regrets. Thank God for everything he has given you. The most happiest people in the world are those with gratitude. That is a tweetable thing. It is tweetable. The most happy people in the world are those with gratitude. So thank him in intangible ways, but also thank him in tangible ways. Yes, thank him in tangible ways. If you love, you have to give. For God so loved the world that he did, he did what? He gave his only begotten son. Love ends with giving. If you're grateful, you give. Okay? A grateful heart is a giving heart. Pastor Joshua here was challenging us that some of us, when we see birthdays on our WhatsApp group, people have birthdays, we are very good at giving uh, messages, sending messages. You know, happy birthday. We are also good at sending pictures of cakes. But he said, you need to go beyond that <laughs> and do something, what? Tangible. If something is in the heart, hmm? if you always tell me, brother, I love you from the heart, but I never see practical results, I will not believe you. I will start doubting your love. If God had told us that I love you, the world I love you, but had left us in our sins and did not say, my son, go down and save them, would be doubting God's love. But the Bible says that Christ, God demonstrates his love to us in that while we are still sinners, Christ died for us. So, let there be something tangible that you bring. Something that is commensurate to honoring a king. We are not going to compare and say, the other one brought this, the other one brought this. No, it is, it is out of your ability. The Bible says, each should give according to how God has blessed him. Give according to your ability. Such that when you give and go back, you say, surely God, I've given you something. I thank you, I've given you something. So let us praise him with words and song, but also let us praise him with tangible gifts. Tangible gifts. It's also good for us to put on um, traditional attire or any kind of attire. Some, sometimes when you change dress code, it's taken more serious. My children are doing online classes, but they require them to put on their uniforms. Because when they put on uniform, their mind is, 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 is focused, is more focused. Maybe when you change the dress code and you come in your kanzu, in your gomesi, maybe it, th there, is this, there is an orientation it gives you. So we're, we're not forcing you to come uh, in, in uh, this particular attire, but you can change. You can put on traditional attire or anything that puts you in thanksgiving mood. Somebody say amen. Yes. That's why the soldiers will put on their attire. 
Because when they're in that attire, they feel militaristic. When the students are in their uniform, they feel that they are students. When the nurses are in their attire, they feel, yes, we are medical, we are helping people. So when we put on some different attire, it also puts us in the thanksgiving mode. Let us make the most of thanksgiving. Somebody said Brian is preaching good. <laughs> Brian is preaching good. I'd like to conclude with this story. I picked this from Pastor Fred. He said that one time a man was fed up with life. He decided to commit suicide. So he went, bought a rope, and um, got up a tree, climbed a tree, took off his clothes. And while he was getting his rope to begin to uh, hang on it, he saw a man down who saw his shirt. And the man was like, Lord, you have given me a shirt. Thank you for the shirt. Then he, he moved further and said, Lord, you have even given me a trouser. Thank you so, so much. Then he moved forward and said, God, a shirt, a trouser, and even shoes. <laughs> he knelt down and said, thank you, Lord. And the man was up, looked down and said, you, leave my things alone. <laughs> leave my things alone. Sometimes you think you do not have until you find somebody who is in more need. Thank God for what he has given you. Thank God for what you have. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I'd like us to stand up. I'd like us to stand up. And we are going to thank God. Amen. Something you're taking for granted, God has given it to you and somebody else does not have it. I want you to pray and say, help me, Lord. Help me, God. Say, help me, God, not to forget any of your benefits. Help me not to forget any of your blessings. As I list down your blessings in my life this week, may I not forget all that you have done for me. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for health. Thank you for love. Thank you for appetite. Thank you for sleep. Thank you for security. Thank you for protection. Thank you for peace of mind. Thank you for joy. Thank you for relationships. Thank you for my shirt. Thank you for my shoes. Thank you for my handbags. Thank you for my smartphone. Thank you for my pastors. Thank you for my husband. Thank you for my brothers. Just go ahead and thank him. Thank him for all those things. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Surely you have done great things, oh God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Father, for the responsibility that you have given me, O oh God. Thank you for the trust that people have put in me, O oh God. Thank you for those intangible blessings, O oh Father. Thank you also for the tangible blessings, O oh God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody say amen, 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 amen.